our agenda for today. Um, I'm going to start with a brief introduction to cross-site request forgery, uh, which is a type of web application attack just in the event that uh, those in the room are not necessarily familiar with it. Um, you don't have to know it really, really well to understand what the attack is, but it certainly helps. Um, I'll talk a little bit about attack vectors, the most common ones for cross-site request forgery, and I think what you'll find is pretty much everything is susceptible. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about drive-by farming, let you know what it is, uh, how the, the phrase was coined, etc. cetera. Um, and then uh, I've got my own uh, Netgear uh, router, broadband router up here, and uh, this is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery and several other things. Uh, they don't make this particular model anymore, and I'm not saying that it's because of this, um, but it is end of life now. And uh, so we've got the router right here. Um, I've already set everything up so you're not going to see all the pain and sweat that goes into actually creating the payloads file and you know, interpreting the HTTP requests and responses to make sure that you can build uh, an, an authentic request that's actually going to pass and do what you want it to do. But I do have everything complete and I'll try to do the best I can to show you how we got to the point where we are able to successfully exploit this router. Um, I'll talk a little bit about countermeasures for cross-site request forgery, and then we're going to do a live demo. All right. So first, we'll start with a brief uh, introduction to cross-site request forgery. So basically, at the very fundamental level, what it is is an exploitation of trust. That is the trust that a web application has in its users. So when we do assessments of Fishnet and we find cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities, because we report on causality, we don't actually say you have a CSERF vulnerability. By the way, if you hear CSERF, that's how we pronounce that, instead of saying cross-site request forgery. Um, so what we call that, we actually report on causality, so root cause. And the root cause of this is that the origin of the request is not verified, okay? Which means anybody can make a surreptitious request on your behalf because the application doesn't actually make sure you are who your token says that you are, your authentication token or session token, all right? So essentially what happens if you, is you have evilsite.com and it is going to make surreptitious requests in the background without the user's knowledge um, to transfer money. Um, as we're gonna see here, uh, change administrative configuration settings on devices or other applications. Really the sky is the limit. If you're able to recreate the request that actually pulls off the transaction or the action that you want to do, um, and it is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery, then this works 100% of the time. Um, there was a guy named uh, Watkins that actually uh, first disclosed this vulnerability back in 1999. I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, link up here if you're interested in going to look at that. Um, we've heard, uh, it, it used to be called uh, session writing. Uh, it was also called uh, confused deputy and some other things. Not real sure how we ended up with CSERF, but that's what it is today. Um, and then the, the most important thing uh, with regard to CSERF is that if you use GETS, HTTP GETS, it's uh, trivial to pull these attacks off. Um, it used to be thought that you could actually avoid CSERF by using nothing but posts, HTTP posts. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, as I'm going to demonstrate today, uh, the attack that we're going to pull off on this router is done with an HTTP post. And the monkey fist tool that I'm going to demo for you guys today makes exploiting cross-site request forgery via HTTP post beyond trivial. It is really, really simple. So um, if you guys are not worried about cross-site request forgery now, you probably will be when you leave because it's going to be extremely easy to pull off these attacks. And uh, there's about probably 80% of the web applications that we come in contact with are vulnerable to this attack. All right. So cross-site request forgery, uh, essentially, I've got a couple of, uh, couple of charts up here. If you look at the one on the top left, this is your, uh, your typical uh, vanilla cross-site request forgery. So you've got a user here. Um, we've got uh, good.com. Um, he logs into good.com. Well, actually, yeah, so he's logged into good.com. He's got a session token, all this type of thing. Um, he stays logged into good.com, and then he happens to go visit bad.com probably doesn't know that it's bad.com. Bad.com uh, has uh, you know, something interesting for him to click. Uh, maybe it's an image. If it's an HTTP get that we're talking about, images work. So 
Um, and images load and render automatically in your browser, right? So all you have to do is literally visit the site and the attack happens. With a post, you actually have to have, you know, clicking or something like that. So um, that's what I'm simulating with um, when I actually show you the demo, this right here. So this would be a mashup or a bulletin board or, you know, any other place that accepts user supplied content in the form of links or other media files or those types of things. So that's, you know, obviously this is incredibly simple, um, but this is the basic idea. So I'm logged into, you can see the router in the background. So for this particular attack, I happen to be logged into the router at the same time that I visit this site. I happen to click on this malicious link, which then uh, does all the bad things in the background. Any questions about that before we move on? All right. So let me, let me really confuse you now. So this is your vanilla cross-site request forgery. This is what we've known about for years and years. Um, the tool that, that I'm going to demo today, Monkey Fist, was written by one of my principal consultants, Nathan Hamill. And at Black Hat USA 2009, he, uh, he released the tool, and he also released a new attack vector for cross-site request forgery. And that's what the DC surf means. So basically, he has coined or created a new attack called dynamic cross site request forgery. And essentially, what this is, and, and this is a really kind of a kludge um, picture here, but essentially, what happens is using Monkey Fist, um, and, and let me stop back, let me, let me digress for just a moment. So, you know, I told you before that people used to think that if you didn't use GET, then you couldn't be exploited, okay? So we defeated that. And then the chosen way to uh, mitigate against cross-site request forgery was using a per-user, per-session nonce or token, typically embedded in a hidden form field. And every request that the user would make to the application, that token would be submitted, and it would be verified against what was known to be a good token in session, et cetera, for that user. And if everything was cool, then they would allow the request to happen. If not, you reject it. Um, the problem is, is that it's using uh, cross site request, using dynamic cross site request forgery. We can actually sniff those tokens now. Um, we can even sniff tokens that are per user, per request, per session, which is the chosen way now to remediate cross site request forgery. So basically, what I'm saying is, there is no complete fix for it. It's still very, very difficult to pull off the attack, but Monkey Fist makes it possible, and I'll get into that a little bit 